away and letting that match completely slip away from them. They definitely need to bounce back here. Indeed they do. And every time we've talked about Q9 in these pre-match uh, segments, it's always been about the firepower, about the skill that these players possess, and they are still showing it in these games that they're playing. They showed it against Carbon, they certainly had the aim, but then they were unable to close it out. Pretty rough tournament for them. They need to do better here to even have a chance of making it further. It's going to be a difficult one for them. Definitely, and I think for them it comes down to map selection. And honestly, this is the first time I'm probably ever going to say this, but I think they should ban Black Widow. I don't think I've ever said a Chinese team should avoid that map, but that's been a bulk of struggle for them. And honestly, it was their worst performance we've seen. I mean, we did see Port go... A little bit wonky for them, but they still had a much better showing. But Black Widow, I think, against AG showed us that Q9 really should be avoiding that map. And they didn't really hold their own against Carbon either. So it wouldn't surprise me at all to see Q9 go ahead and ban Black Widow here. Let's see if that will be the case then. Certainly be a bit of a an odd choice, but definitely one that we can understand the reasoning behind and one that we can support. But... Going over to have a look at their opponents now on boss. These guys have had, obviously, a rough tournament as well, but they've certainly had their moments, had their rounds. Lucas, I think we mentioned, has had... Was it Lucas has had the worst? No, 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 it wasn't. It was... Lucas had, I think, a five-kill game or something like that, but someone else had four. Yeah, Lucas was close, but actually, the two worst games are both in here. We had Lucas on the other side, and the other player, I believe, was Zemo, Zemo on Q9, so... Obviously, there's a reason they're here at that one in three score line, and this is their chance to redeem themselves. And, you know, maybe they'll get through, and we'll see if they can here. But honestly, I think both of these teams really have a lot to prove in this one. Nobody wants to be the only team that goes home with just a single win under their belt. Everyone else is going to have at least two wins here, regardless of what happens, except for one of these teams. So, honestly, for Boss, I think they need to be thinking about what map they want to go for on this one. Obviously, they know Black Widow is a weak point for AG throughout, or for Q9 throughout this tournament so far. Um, but at the same time, uh, it's not to say that Q9 wouldn't necessarily lose if this goes to Black Widow, because Boss, they've been a little bit shaky across the board as well. However, I would be surprised if Q9 didn't ban that. But honestly, for Boss's ban, I'm not really sure what they're going to be banning here. I know they've had a bit of a hit and miss performance, but honestly, I don't think the map has been the largest factor in that for them. We can see which way this one does go. We should be jumping into the veto in just a second here, but I think no matter no matter the map for either of these teams, it's going to be a very difficult match. Once again, it's another one that's very tough to call, but I think it's going to be that way regardless of the map. And this is the last chance for these two teams, really. I mean, winning this match doesn't even necessarily guarantee you a place in the playoffs. I'm not sure exactly how it's all going to shake out yet, but no matter what, it's do or die win or go home yeah nobody wants to be that team that falls one and four as the only team with that low of a record as well bands coming out q9 gonna drop mexico interesting choice from them and boss they're gonna drop sub base so interesting that it is going to be black widow q9 the struggle could be real they don't even get the more favored side oh, here in this God. situation either and this is looking a bit scary for Q9 here. We've already seen what can happen to them when they have to start off on this defending side. They did come back into it versus Carbon earlier, but it's only a 4-5 half for them. It wasn't the strongest of halves, and then moving on to their attacking side. Granted, that was Carbon's defensive side, and their defensive side has been the best that we've seen this tournament pretty much on all the maps, given how consistent they are in being able to string rounds together on their defensive sides, but still be a very difficult one for Q9 perhaps, but they're still Q9. I'm not willing to count them out just yet based on the map. still a chance for them to come into this one, hit some shots and show, show the, us that they're the team that we think they are. Yeah, I'm not so sure what's happened to them in this event, but they've definitely let a lot of games slip. And now this is a chance to prove themselves on the map that's held them back throughout this entire tournament. They've had so many poor showings on it. It would be a shame to see them go down yet again here to that one and four position. So boss though, they find themselves in a great place here. They could potentially take themselves from Honestly, for a long time, being the lowest standing team, they came out of yesterday last place, but there's still a glimpse of hope for them to find their way into the semifinals here, and this is a great first step if they can somehow take this one away from Q9. 
I don't think it's that much of a stretch to imagine they'd be able to do it as well. It's I've said it multiple times so far this event, but Q9 have looked incredibly mortal here. They're not the world beaters that we expect them to be. So it's certainly possible, but for the final time of the group stage, the red lights do mean go. We'll be getting underway here very, very shortly on Black Widow. Last chance for redemption for both of these teams. Q9 and Boss looking for their second win to even have a hope of making it into the playoffs, continuing to the semis, continuing to those best of threes. It all comes down to this one map, 18 rounds, potentially a few more if we get the overtime rolling, but even then, just an hour really at most before we know which of these teams is potentially going through and which will go home. Here we have it, it is going to be our final match of the group stage, getting kicked off here. Boss on the blacklist side to start it off. They are gonna have that momentum on their side if they can make it happen here, but it's already looking like a good first round for Q9. Bean gets the opening pick, Shady goes down. And they already have a nice 5v4. Solo gonna be playing aggressive here, pushing up the catwalk very early. And now they have nice control on mid and this puts Boss in a very awkward situation here. They have really no map control to work with, even though A-Long has been given up from Q9. Boss, they haven't taken control of anything here except for this slight positioning they have over towards the B-bomb side bridge, but it still might not be enough for them to make something happen here. Ritter's going to be on that M4 once again. Still the only player this tournament who's chosen to pick one up. Everyone else preferring the AKs or the Orm. So we can make it work. There's some reasonable success with that gun, but now it's going to be a push in towards B, and with the amount of info that q have, they can get these rotates happening super early. It'll be three players on this bomb side, perhaps even four, before Boss even get in, and the flank coming in as well. Q9, due to that early info in mid, or the early push in mid, do have so much info. Solo, that was a freestanding target that he really should have got. And again, we see Ritter bringing out the M4. Definitely something that saw improvement from him when he brought it out towards the end of his games yesterday. Lucas finds an opening here as well. And again, Q9 looking shaky on their defenses here as now Boss finds themselves and a nice four on three. Ritter very low on HP, but still they have the numbers to work with on this push. And again, we see Boss being that team that's not afraid to play down this clock completely. Lucas finds another one there with the arm and it's gonna be a four on two. And now they're ready for this execution, but still they need to be careful. Zemo gonna be playing in the corner box here. He's actually looking for a wider peak though, wants to see if he can maybe challenge Lucas, but Lucas, he's just gonna be toying with him while the rest of his team works quickly over towards a great positioning coming out from Kale. He's already gonna drop under catwalk as well. And he catches one on the rotation. It's Zemo going down and Bean now left in a 1v4, arm in his hands. And Q9, they start with the opening pick here, but everything has slipped away from them. Bean though, a chance for redemption. He needs the ace and the clutch, but it's just not gonna happen. Lucas though, great first round from him. And now we see Boss in a nice early position here, 1-0. I feel like that round did fall apart, unfortunately, when Solo got around the back of them. Had all the time in the world to either hold his fire there, get some better info, better position, or to line up a quick, precise shot. But unfortunately, he went for the spray. It was a bit messy. He couldn't land it, and he did get turned on. It's the sort of sloppiness that we don't like to see from Q9 here, especially with two players pushing individually into the AWM of Lucas over here in the B box room. It's not the ideal start for them, certainly. Boss do well to capitalize on the mistakes and the opportunities that they're given to come through with that first round win. Setup has changed here. Kale might be walking into his death if he does peek this. It's a double stack inside the box room. Solo bringing out the M4 after he died to it as well. Interesting decision I just noticed there. <laughs> so if Solo. They can kill me with it, I can kill that. He's going to see if he can make that work for himself. I haven't actually seen him use one hardly ever at all. So. Not sure why he's making that decision, but hey, maybe Ritter just sparked that in him after that nice shot onto him. So Q9 going to be playing in a one down situation here on rounds, but still there is time left to, to recover here. Q9 though, going to be rotating over towards this A bomb site. They have, they have a four man stack here. Actually, no, there's still two B, so only a three man stack. Solo going to be just playing safe and passive, but we do see Boss grouping up for this catwalk execution. They're gonna have a ton of players ready for them, though. Q9, they're gonna be able to hold this one off. A nice three-for-one trade. Lucas 
Able to grab one on the lurk here, though. Still a two on three situation. They can't afford to let it slip here, though. Kale finds one, and it's Lucas left in a one on two. He's going to be spotted, though, solo, trying to make something happen with this M4. But Lucas, he's been such a key player for this team of boss so far. We'll see if he can keep it up. Finds himself one. Could Lucas do it here once again? It's all on solo. The M4 in his hands. It's not going to happen. What a shot from Lucas. Is that a no scope? It had to have been the fastest no scope ever. Or maybe even a, a quick scope. I'm it not might sure. Have been but incredibly quick, quick scope. But the scope barely rendered on screen. If that was the case, goodness me. Guarantee you, by the way, that solo M4 pick. That's very much, dude. I was behind him. I was shooting at him. He one eighty me. If the M4 can do that for him, I, surely it works for me, right? That's 100% the logic. Now it's a 2-0 lead for Boss. We knew Q9 was going to have some struggles here on this map, and so far it's definitely showing itself to be very true. And now Boss find themselves in a position where they could actually claw their way back into a win and find themselves a spot in the semifinals. And they would be going up against Pacific Mokta if they are the team to come out on top here and make that spot theirs. Lucas... Finds the opener again. Lucas already on a 7-0 KD right now, oh and we're my. only three rounds in, but he's not even done yet. He's still looking for more. Shady taking some early damage, though. He's going to be lit up down to just 25 HP, but so far, Boss, they're ready to strike once again here out of mid. Lucas, he's ready to lead this charge, and he is fearlessly peeking everybody on this Q9 lineup, and rightfully so. He's been hitting the shots he needs to here, and right now, Q9 looking shaky here once again on the defense. Now the take will come out into mid. It's going to be a mid to B. CZHY is going to be quick on the flank. And actually will find his way out and grab one. Ritter with the entry. Brings him to the three versus four. 2K for that M4. CZHY again. The quick flank. This round goes over which way. Down to the 1v1. Ritter versus CZHY. And over the 3K coming in for him. Flanking in through mid. A chaotic round. But Q9 managed to grab another one. And that's exactly what they needed to try and stall the momentum that Boss was creating very early on in this match. And now we'll see if they can slow things down and actually close out with a half win for themselves. But Q9, they are still down by a single round. We'll see if they can tie it up here. Definitely a position they need to put themselves in if they want to keep things close and within their reach because Q9, they don't want to fall again on Black Widow. It would be a third time in five maps they've fallen on Black Widow all three times in a row. Just wouldn't be the way to go down here. But we'll see if they have what it takes to make it happen. Right now, they are still down just by one round, looking for the opening pick, though. It's going to be Bean just watching the A-cross. Very passive setup coming out from Q9 to start off the round. Q9 with the control towards A-long. Going much slower here indeed. The bomb's still hanging around. The blacklist spawned too, so not committing anywhere just yet. There's this double stack still waiting on short. It's in fact a bait and switch setup for CZHY here. Fuller will take the first contact, and as soon as he starts shooting, CZHY would swing, but instead he's actually choosing to force the issue and could have found a headshot there onto Kale. Won't, but it's the info at least, and we'll choose to fall back up on Cat. In the meantime, Q9 still moving slowly. Boss again, they favor controlling this B bridge position. They always send a couple players over here. This time it's going to be a little bit later in the round. Only a minute to make their move. But it is going to be Bean who finds the opener here. Exactly what Q9 needed to start this off. Just slowing down this execution's potential. Right now though, we are going to see a couple players working their way up mid. A little bit aggressively here from Boss. They've got both Shady and Rita here. Potentially ready to strike the ZZHY. He's going to be playing on the mid ramp behind that smoke. Ritter, though, goes up. Cat finds himself one. ZZHY, though, gets a trade flag there. Actually finds himself another. And he's going to just shut it down completely. Gets the triple kill, making a quad kill. And that is exactly what Q9 needs from him. That's another big round as well. And now Q9 start to find themselves in a situation where they could definitely pull this one back here. Nine and two, though, on ZZHY. Pretty sure that's seven of those nine in the last two rounds as well. Three. The round before the one we just had, blinking out through mid four in that situation, locking it down. And now two apiece. Q9 tie it back up to boss. Solo having a bit of an awkward engagement here, both looking for that headshot. Not quite going to find it. The single shoulder tag coming through for Solo. Once again, it's another slow round here from boss. Waiting for the smokes to fade here at A long. Three players stacked up, getting ready though. No one from Q9 is directly holding this cross. 
Might have some info on Bean looking up through the sport if he decides to go for it, but nothing as of just yet. Ali already rotating back around to B as well with that bomb. So he's alone with the bomb heading into a three stack. If he goes down here, that's the bomb down. You can already see what that means to boss. They immediately need to move and go back, try and help their bomb carrier, but they still haven't committed to it. Fortunately for them, Q9 have not managed to grab that frag just yet. Their early B box room stack has been found out and pushed back. Now for boss, they can try and make something of this with the info that they have, but there's still an aggressive presence here on short from Solo. Now we do see if they're going to take this one and finally commit towards this A-bomb site. They need to be careful, though. Their bomb carrier is still in a position where he could get picked alone. He's going to try and fall back here, but they really need to be careful. Yase is right behind the mid doors and could peek out at just any moment here. Bean, though, in a position to hold things off with Solo on this A-bomb site, but they're going to have to do it quickly and effectively now because this push is definitely coming their way. Bean gets taken down immediately. Zemo on the back of the site, but he's not there to support his teammates. He's just going to be kicking back. Wondering what went wrong here. ZZHY and Zemo left in a 2v5. But ZZHY is going to have to step it up once again for his team. As Zemo goes down, he's the last alive here. And it's just not going to happen. Shady and Lucas end this one nicely. And Boss still stay on top 3-2. to two. Very closely fought game here, though, between these two teams. This is more what we expected from all of our games today. And they've all really been not that close. 10-7, 10-3, 10-3. Other score lines we have facing us down at the moment. So maybe... Our final game with the group stage, end of the day, can deliver with something a little bit closer, but Boss would certainly not like it to be that way. They'd love to just power through and take this one 10-2, but I'm not sure Q9 will give them that opportunity. Definitely a tough situation for Q9. They're still down on rounds in this one. However, it is a blacklist-sided map, so Q9, all they're looking for is at least four rounds here in this half. Maybe five, but four would still be enough for them to get the job done on their blacklist half because that's just how Black Widow seems to go. Right now, though, it is three to two. Things looking good for Boss. Potentially find themselves with a win here. It's a long road to make that happen in full. Yaze going to be playing in the top of box room. Kale decides he doesn't want to take that challenge. Definitely a smart decision, but Boss, they're going to continue to run this setup where they sort of just wait to see who gets a little bit overly aggressive on Q9. This time it's going to be Solo, but he finds the shot anyways. Kale goes down. It's a nice early five on four. Solo also back on the AK now. Had enough of the M4 life. Decided it didn't suit him. Worked out here, he has found that first pick, but there's two more players coming up. So he needs to get one more here if he can. Can't quite connect it. Has got some good damage across, but not the frag. Now it's easy, HY. Looking to trade out his fallen teammate. Grab another kill, keep him in the lead, but it's Shady with an excellent headshot coming around the corner. That's going to make it into a four versus three here. Push coming into... Interesting. <laughs> And Shady falls through the map. Still a three-on-two situation, <laughs> but there was a texture glitch, I guess, there, and yeah. Shady falls through the map. Not anything you can really do, just a game error that happens from time to time. So two-on-three now, Yaze and Zemo now with a crazy chance given to them to take this one away. Two-on-two. Two. Now the potential really there, but Rita is going to try and hold on here. Zemo left in a 1v2, Q9. Seeing if they can make this happen in the one-on-two. Zemo, though, has to do something big here, but it's not going to happen. Rita saves the day, so the fallen player through the map, not going to affect that outcome at all. Fortunately enough, though, for Boss, they've got to laugh it off there. I mean, nothing you can really do in that situation. There's <laughs> not a whole lot that you can really do when that happens to you. Just got to be like, all right, well, Crossfire today decided that it was better than me, and that's okay. Sometimes that happens, you know? It happens to the best of us. Either way, though, it is Boss now with a two-round lead on their black list side. This is the favoured side, so it's good that they're managing to run away with some rounds here. There's now two M4s out on Boss. Ritter's managed to convert Ali to the cause. It seems to be his goal here. He's got a couple players to try their luck on it, but rightfully so. I mean, he's been I playing quite well. Use it. Seven and three. Lucas, though, still leading the charge here, nine and two. But looking at Q9, really the only rounds they've been able to win were those two rounds where ZZHY just popped off. Nothing else has really worked for them than just having some individual star players step it up and win a round for them. And if that's the only rounds they're going to win, they're going to need a lot more of that star power quickly. Otherwise... It's going to be a tough road ahead. Q9 already down by two, potentially by three if Boss find themselves another round. And looks like they may test their luck towards A once again. This stack on short. Still waiting at Solomon's easy edge. One again. Solo's going a little bit too far and he's given it up. 
He always wants to go for this early peak and he's been punished for it. A lot more rounds than it's worked, I think, here. He's three and six. Has worked a few times, but Yaze will go into mid and grab that frag onto Kale to bring it back into a four versus four. ZHY still lurking around as well. Looking at someone will come up A long, give him a chance for the jewel there. But Zemo now has some pressure on him as Shady goes into the box room. Ball's back as well. The bomb's still in mid. There's still time for Boss to go to either bomb side, but it looks like they will be grouping up for an A hit here. And again, Boss, you see them just trying to make the other team uncomfortable by waiting until the very last minute to push. They want Q9 to make the mistake of peeking early, and now they're just going to shift their way up the catwalk. But right now, Bean and ZZHY find frags, and this should surely be around that Q9 can walk away with now. Ritta and Ally here trying to make it happen. Ritta, he's already found one. ZZHY has to hold this position. If he goes down, this could still be around. Over to Boss. Oh it's going to happen. My. Ritta and Ally find frags. It's now down to a 1v1. Boss now back in a winnable situation, but he has to plant the bomb now. Ally gets it down, and it's going to be a one-on-one. -on -one. Bean, though, in desperate need of this round for Q9. Otherwise, it's going to be a 5-2 to two on the board, but Bean, he's already working his way up behind. This is a difficult position, though, to catch someone off guard, and Ally going to be playing in the window. All he has to do, though, is wait for the peak, but he has no idea that Ally's going to be playing here. He could be really anywhere in this situation. He's going to fake the defuse, though. The position Ooh. has been given away. He thought he was going to get a shot out of it, but still, there's only 14 seconds. Bean cannot afford <laughs> to wait any longer. Oh, he has no. to force this engage, and he's just being toyed with here. Finally gets it, though. And there you see it. It is going to be Ally finally going down. Bean secures the round, but what a cheeky little play there to try and keep it stalled. Man, Ali could have... Uh Really could have stopped peeking there. Every single time he jumped out there, we've been able to see that Bean still wasn't defusing. He just decided that he was going to play with his food and bit off a little bit more than he could chew. But it's a round that Q9 gets quite lucky, I think, to be able to steal away. A bit of a misplay there in the end. But still, perhaps thought there was a bit less time on the boss and they're actually uh, on the bomb than there actually was. In the end, it was two seconds left in that defuse. And now the quad push out long. Solo and Yaze both find frags into the three versus five now for boss and off the back of that one versus one q9 is showing no signs of slowing q9 definitely in a good position to win this round kale though is snuck under the window already and boss already have full control of b and there's no players on this bomb site though there's still some high potential for them to take this round if they can have a solid post plan Unfortunately, though, they're already running into trouble. Yaze going to find one, looking for more here. And this retake should be theirs now. Five on two. There's only two players left to hold on. It's going to be Shady and Kale looking for miracles here. Otherwise, this retake should come through. Yaze, though, going to be forcing the issue. Kale stuck in a corner, finds himself a flag. Still a two on four, not looking too likely here. The nade takes down Kale, and Shady falls to Bean. And just like that, the lead is gone, and we're back at a tie. Q9 are getting real loud. Trying Very to bring out excited. that intimidation factor here and maybe force Boss into just letting it slip, but it's still possible here. Q9, this is still a half they could take away. It certainly is. We move into the ninth and final round now. Here we have 5-4 for one of these teams, and Q9, they were certainly at risk of letting this one slip, but they've now thrown the smoke to land deep on the B bridge and give them this avenue for aggression. And through the underpass into mid. And the progression utility out as well. Boss aware that this is a possibility, of course, and that will be Lucas waiting for it, able to grab the AWM frag as well. That's an excellent start. Zemo, though, trades it back immediately. Right now we do see 4v4, but Zemo almost has a shot at that frag, but somehow he's not going to be able to get it. Nice shot there from Ally. Takes him down, and it's going to be a three-on-four. Bean Solo and ZZHY looking to try and hold on and give Q9 the half, but Boss still in a great position to try and take this one away. Lucas... Also going to be very low here as well as Ally. So still a chance for them to fall if they're not careful. Q9, though, going to lose Bean in mid. Lucas again continuing forward strong for his team in this first half. Solo wins ZZHY, though. They're going to try and win it back in a 2v4. Very difficult situation for them. Split up as well. One up on B ramp, one in short. Can't even fight this one together. They're both going to have to win a 1v1, and even then... They have to win the 2v2, get onto the bomb sites. Easy HY is being pressed on from every angle. It's an incredibly tough situation. Does have a chance for a frag here. In the meantime, his teammates managed to work his way over. But that's a great little one tap there from Ali. Destroys him. It's Easy HY. Left one versus four. Too much to ask, I think. Should have spot out the one player there. 
looking to try and find something, but misses the drop of the catwalk. Now just going to have to commit through these smokes and will manage to spread down Ali. That's one at least, and with the bomb not yet down, there's a chance it is now down. Over on the A bomb side as well. And that's the second time ZDH Wise missed that jump. So, unfortunately, no short take from him. Gonna have to go in through the spawn. And Shady is waiting. It's gonna be the 5 4 for Boss. Just coming out with a slim lead on their attacking side here on Black Widow in our final game of the group stage. Honestly, a very generic scoreline for this half. I mean, 5 4 is generally what we see come out on Black Widow as sort of your standard expected score. So it's still really anyone's map to take. Honestly, with four rounds on that half, that's better than I was expecting from Q9, considering how that one started. They looked very sketchy with how they were playing, just very not prepared going into this one. But they actually brought it back. The individual plays, especially ZZHY stepping it up here in this match, has led them onto that fourth round. And now it's just a one round difference here. If they can start their blacklist side strong, there's still a very strong potential Q9 can take this one away from Boss. Stakes, of course, very high. The loser of this matchup is going home. And that's why I think we see both of these teams getting incredibly hype when they do win a round. Very excited, lots of noise. And why not? They know that every single round is crucial in this one. It's going to be the nade stack out towards A long for both teams. We've seen this pretty much every single round on Black Widow. Between every single combination of teams that we have. Lucas managed to get away with that AWM despite being tagged down a little bit. No early pick for him though. That's what he was really looking for. And it's a very mid-heavy setup here from Q9. Three players in that mid-area around B ramp. Only one actually anchoring on A. Definitely an interesting setup from Q9. Boss as well, they had somewhat of a mid stack at the beginning of the round, but now they have fanned out into basically a 2 1 2 setup here. Just going to be playing very safe, waiting to see what Q9 decides to do. But that's all they have to do here. They have the lead, and the pressure is on Q9 to make their move in this half and potentially find themselves in the lead. Q9, though, not so sure where they want to take this one just yet. Looking for a pick in mid, but. As we've seen in the past, Boss, a team that isn't really going to be too counter-aggressive on you. They're going to wait for you to push in, and they're going to play very, very passive positions here. And CCHY, he's looking for one, finds Ooh. the tap there onto Lucas. Great way to enter in towards A, but flashbangs are going to come back onto them. Still a 4v5, but the pace has definitely been slowed down. Being taken out by Kale. And now there's a chance for Boss to hold on here. Kale is in a great position to stall it out, and we already see Q9 backing up off of this one. Ali as well with his position in towards A long will be able to get an awful lot of info about where they're coming from. There's going to be a play over to B for Boss. 50 seconds, so I'll need to move relatively quickly, but getting over that B bridge in towards the box room now. Two players in the bomb site and one flanking. Boss have this one entirely red. Kale coming in behind them very, very quickly. Here comes the take as well. Kale manages to get two Shady Tribes in as well. And it's all now up to Solo. Appropriately for his name, he's on his own. Does get a chance onto Ali. We go for a run here, 30 seconds left, no bomb in his possession. It's over in the box room in B, he's got to go for this take. It's a very difficult crossfire for him to deal with. One out in the backyard, one inside the box room, and one just waiting on B side, just in case, just in case his teammates can't get it done. They do have the insurance policy on the bomb side. Solo now does have this bomb, but there it is. Does have the bomb, but has no time to do anything but go and plant. Five seconds, there is no time at all. He can't make it. They just have to hide. There will not be a bomb player today. And they get the kill as well. Just to add insult to injury, another excellent round from Boss. This is where it starts to get a little bit scary for Q9. Already down six to four. Four rounds away from Boss, finding themselves in a great position here. But Q9, they still have time to recover. It's going to be a quick engage here over towards A long. But Boss, again, their passive nature. They don't want to take this fight. They're just going to give up that control. They don't want to have any players fall early. And it's honestly been a nice advantage for them. They don't risk giving up any early five on fours by having someone get a little bit overzealous and getting caught out alone. Solo, though, he's going to be hunting alone in mid for a frag to start this one off. He's going to have just a safe position here. Wait to see if someone maybe pushes through on the edge of that smoke. But right now, Q9, they are definitely in need of a round here. So they are. You know, they've taken up the favored side in this one. Really need to get their way into some of these rounds. They do have a three stack they're about to run into on short. The entries will need to be perfect, and so far they have not been. That's the bomb going up and going down first as well. They know it as well. It's just been cold. They know the bomb's here. Solo will not be able to get anything done here, surely. He does find one through the smoke, but the immediate trade is there, and Boss 
They've stolen the bomb away from the attacking side. It's been an easy HY to do it all. Incredibly difficult situation, and now it's just been bomb not in his possession. One versus four. All but impossible for him here. More than likely, not a situation he's going to win. Bean would need basically a miracle at this point. I mean, we do have two players on the side of Boss that are quite low, but still, they should at least be able to trade on this one. The bomb being in their control gives them pretty much all the advantage they need here to win out this round. Bean going to run into some trouble here, though. Rita, he spotted, though. Nice reaction shot there from Bean, but still, three more players standing in his way. He's going to have a chance to isolate. Maybe another 1v1 before he goes for this peak. He's going to spot one, takes him out. He's looking for more. Bean not going to be able to make it happen, though. The trade comes through, and it's going to be Q9 falling yet again here on their blacklist side. Seven rounds now for bosses to extend their lead further and further. And the misplay losing Q9 in the round in that instance was that bomb committing early. That's an excellent little one tap from ZZHY though. Eliminates Shady entirely as he peeks out to throw a grenade. So that's a nice little bit of presence there from them. Q9 start off the right way, but as I was saying last round, they send the bomb in first. And as soon as that one kill is gathered, even if Solo had fallen back there and not been taken down, the bomb was still in control of their enemy. And that's the sort of mistake that you can't be making here, especially as Kale strafes out and evens, out, evens it back into the four versus four. Yaze and Bean, though, do manage to trade it out. Now into the two versus four. ZZHY with a spot on Sarita as well. Should be able to win this fight. Not quite. Still doable here. But Bean manages to grab a shot. And now it's all under Ritter. One versus three and low on HP. Should be an easy round for Q9. All they have to do is find him there through the smoke, which they will. And now the clawback begins to see if they can bring this one to a tie. That's going to make it 7-5. to five. Still in favor of Boss here, but Q9 definitely need to keep stacking rounds if they want to make this a match where they have a chance of taking it back. We engage here, though, over towards A long. And again, we see Boss, as soon as they think someone's going to be there, they're not ready and eager to fight on these positions A long. They just want to back up and go to their default setup. And that seems to be sort of their bread and butter tactic here. But it's worked quite well for them so far in this matchup. Two to one on rounds on their global risk half so far. So Boss now trying to extend their lead out to a third round if they can grab it here. That would put them also only two away from sending Q9 home. In a very rough tournament for them and Bean has taken an awful lot of damage with the AWM peak. Has the team been able to find a kill just yet? Boss once again being quite cautious here, not committing too far on these aggressive picks. Oh, they might be looking in here for something, but instead gonna cross safely, go back over and reinforce A. Maybe playing close to the mid doors as well. This is a risky boss at this point. They're playing quite aggressive, but not so much that we punished. At this point, they're just waiting for Q9 to make the mistake, and they're only just going to get away. A sliver of HP remaining, but he will stay alive, and that's what matters here. Still the five versus five, despite a lot of initial damage. Now it is going to be up to Q9 to make their move. They're starting to run down this clock. It's now under a minute, and they have to start committing towards a bomb site soon. But Boss getting very antsy here, potentially going to push out here into mid. They've got four players ready to strike here, Solo and Bean. Potentially going to run into some trouble. Boss, though, sees that there's still a mid presence. They're going to go ahead and back off. And again, you see Boss, they play together. They get the information, but they don't take the fights. They just get the intel they need to try and get these guys into an uncomfortable corner on Q9. So play some great reads coming out from Boss, but Zemo, he's the first to finally get one on the board. ZZHY gets another, but Lucas, he's going to trade out and take him down. Still three on four. The bomb now slowly working its way onto B. It's been completely exposed, though. This fake has been sold by Solo, and this is going to be a great read coming out from Q9. They now have an empty bomb site to work with. Even though this is a 3v3, they have to be careful, though. Bean and Zemo very low for this retake. Very low indeed, but they're getting some good post plant positioning going outside of B. Inside the box room as well. And Zemo's playing this close angle, waiting for it. He will catch out the one in the second. An extra one headshot coming in. All up to Lucas now. He's been good, but this, I think, would be too much. And Bean is waiting for it. Q9 snatch back another immediately. An excellent response from them in this game, I think. We've been waiting on close games all day. I think we've finally gone on our hands here, Kyle. We're looking at surely 17 or 18 rounds. Definitely a game that should go the distance here, but still Boss 
They could close this out 10-6 if they go for the sweep now, but with how close this has been, I don't see that being too likely. Solo spots one on Cat, can't connect on the shot. Kale gonna get flashed out here, but still in a position where he can safely hide. Nice nade comes in to follow it up, though. Solo still not able to get that frag. Kale takes him down. That's an early lead on the round for Boss. Lucas almost spots someone in the lower B from mid, but still he's going to be able to back off there. But Bean finds himself a frag onto Kale. The trade comes through. It's still an even four on four. You know, now starting to do a lot better with getting these trades rolling, with getting back the kills that they initially lose. Boss going for a bit of a risky setup here, stacking three players over towards B. If it is the A hit, which is what it looks like it will be for Q9, then Ali's going to have to have an incredibly nice round here. Needs to find himself multiple kills, and the timing might just not work out for him. Thought he was going to consider going back into the mid ramp, but instead it's Q9 who are repositioning and reconsidering. And if they go over to B, this is exactly what Boss want them to do, but back they go again, keeping us as well as their opponents guessing. Ali is playing a bit of a retake position on this bomb site. He's going to be able to call this to his teammates in just a second there as the grenades do come in. There's the flash. The rotation not here just yet. Yaze will be trying to sell this fake onto B, but the rotation will surely be coming. And Ali, what can he do here? He has to wait. Shady does grab the one. That's that fake cleaned up. There's the flashbang as well. But Ali has not yet moved. Three versus four, though. Advantage is with the defensive side. And Zemo looking to try and make it an even one, but the bomb is going down. We planted. And now it's on to Boss to get this retake happening. Everyone rotating in. No one particularly close with the exception of Ali, but still with the, uh, the player advantage. We've got a great chance of making this one work. It's ZHY too. He's pushed out way too far alone. They're in a lot of isolated situations here. They have to be careful. If Bean doesn't hit this first shot, this could be a perfect chance for Boss to just wipe them on the retake. Here comes the support though. Zemo and Bean find the opener. Bean finds another. It's down to a 1v2 though. Rita looking for some sort of hope here. Gets one. Can he get the 1v1 though? Bean, the last hope here to keep this alive. Rita with the fake defuse here. Bean playing so patient though. No time. He gets the peak in Q9. They hold on to grab it. He would run out of ammo there, goodness. Stop shooting, maybe thinking he had the kills cured, maybe trying to get the defuse. Whatever it was, it doesn't matter. It's been with a heroic round to save it, and it's seven rounds to seven. This one's going to be very, very close indeed. Boss now, trying to find the opening pick anywhere that they can. Three players coming out so long, but it's easy H-Y, Phil goes one for one there. So they can't quite clean up another, but at least some damage is found. Shady and Ali both quite low. So I'm just going to go out behind this smoke, try and find someone over committal, over committing. But instead it's Shady just spraying straight down. So despite the low HP, it's another player advantage here for Boss. This is their chance to walk back into that lead that they have held for a decent amount of time here on this map. But Q9, if they can win this out in a three on four, they will be swinging into an eight seven lead have them shell and have themselves a chance here at making it happen and actually taking this one away from boss who's looked to be the better team for the majority of this map but right now we've had Bean definitely stepping up to the plate here in the second half and we'll see if he can continue that forward sitting at nine and two with that arm in his hands definitely being one of the stronger players here in half number two Bean though he's looking for a peek over towards the B bomb site we'll see what he can find here going to be just Spotting Ritter there, and he's actually going to back off with that information. They know they're playing at least one on B now, but looks like they want to go ahead and rotate off and take this one A. And there's a very aggressive long hold here coming in from Boss. They're actually considering pushing through. They could catch the bomb here. They will. They can't quite land the spray, but Ali does land it. That's the C4 loss now. That's a very difficult one, potentially for Q9, but luckily enough for them, Boss happy with their two-man advantage. Don't contest it. They drop the C4. They fall back. And they know that they have a massive advantage here. They know that they pretty much forced Q9 into either sprinting for B or going up short A. And with Ritter pushing through B, making sure that's not the case, they know this has to be an A play now. An excellent shot from Zemo that will open up the first. Now looking down to long where they know these players are. That's a great shot again, Zemo. Brings into the two versus two. 2v4 now down to a very winnable situation here. The bomb planted and Q9 able to position themselves how they'd like here. For this opportunity, Kale and Ritter, though, nice HP to work with in this situation, but they have to move quickly. And here comes the collapse. Kale in a great position to catch them off guard here. Zemo going to be playing 
on the lower staircase. They're gonna try and bait them into this two on two, but so far it's not looking too good for Q9. It's gonna be Yaze left in the 2v1, but Rita, he's gonna get the drop down shot and just barely holds on to this one for Boss. Fuse is gonna be a little bit close, but he'll get it with a few seconds left on the clock there. It's another round for Boss coming through. Just two more needed for them. It's a very near thing. This one is by no means over. This game's still so close. One more round needed for Q9 to tie this one up and guarantee us either 18 rounds or overtime. Boss would love to close this one out right here, but it's been a pretty rough half for them as a team. It's Ali and Lucas not having too much luck here. Kale doing the lion's share of the work. Bean stepping up for Q9. It's going to have to be something pretty special out of either one of these teams to break this deadlock that we're currently having going round for round. Kale swings out wide, can't land the shot, but does get out of it. Despite taking a bit of damage, relatively unscathed, doesn't go down, so that's something at least. He'll be able to fall back and take a better angle with his teammate. Zemo looking for this pick on Cat. Can't seem to find it. Lucas finds the opener here. Things starting off on the right foot for Boss. They do take a lot of damage there onto Lucas and Kale. They're going to back off here. They know they have the advantage in Q9. They're going to wait and see if they make another mistake here. But Q9, they have very little map control in the situation. They're just going to be holding the back of mid and out, so out towards B here. So definitely a tough situation to recover, to say the least. But it's easy HY. What an angle to hold here. We'll see if he can hit the shot, though. Nails one. It's going to be all I going down. Now it is going to be a four on four here. Things looking a bit better for Q9, but still much work to be done to close this one out. And now the defenders splitting up two and two, going for the crossfires on both bomb sites. Playing the gamble that no matter where Q9 come, they'll be able to deal with it. The bomb actually down top mid here for Q9. And so he's trying to get in here, maybe find himself something, but they're going to have to go back, go back and grab that bomb. And with just 45 seconds left, they don't really have all the time in the world to play with here. They've got enough to work with. Not going to be rushed by any means, but certainly not luxuriously able to stretch out the round. But it is three players committing up this catwalk position. Only Shady here. His teammate Lucas is coming in. The flashbangs are good. Stopping the peak from, from every single direction, but Shady somehow still alive here. Dancing around the back of the side, can't commit too far. Lucas is here for support, but can't quite find it. Double kill, triple kill for Q9. Only one frag answered back, and it's Yaze to close it. Q9 make it 8-8, eight to eight. and we're going either 18 rounds or overtime here, Kyle. Definitely a crazy situation in front of both of these teams. Just two rounds separating either of them from making themselves a 2-3 and three team here, but still... Two rounds left for one of these teams to be guaranteed that last place position as well. So a lot on the line in these final two rounds in regulation, potentially overtime on the horizon if it goes one for one here. But right now, Boss going to be looking to anchor it down here. They're going to go for a little bit of aggressive play over towards Cat. Zemo, though, he has to be ready for this position. Otherwise, he could run into trouble. Kale ready to peek this corner. We'll see if he decides to challenge And This is going to be a potential death trap here. Kale finds the first. Kale, he finds the double kill. He's not done just yet, looking for one on to Solo, but Solo, he's going to be getting the heck out of there, and he leaves the bomb with exactly the that. defense. Boss now in a great position to grab this ninth round. Feels like deja vu at this point. Boss made this exact mistake on their attacking side, and now Q9 did it to them. Send the bomb in first, gift it to the defenders in almost the exact same position. Green has worked his way in from long A. Spots out one, but can't connect the shot, and gives away his location, so... In the five versus three, this should definitely be a ninth round for Boss. At this point, all they've got to do is turtle up, sit on this bomb, make sure that they can't retrieve it. This is the HY is going to be trying to do just that. Solo is going to grab one, but the trades are there. Solo has to fall back here at this point, and it will be Ali to grab that kill as well. Now a four versus one. Bomb still very much out of his reach. Bean has to go for this one. He's given the first chance, but can't hit it. Lucas takes it. And now it's either the map for Boss or the overtime. All they need is this final round here, but Q9, their tournament life now on the line. It is do or die for them. And you can hear the music come out. This is their moment here to try and take this one into overtime. It is gonna be basically a tie or die situation now. Q9, they've struggled throughout the tournament so far, but now they're gonna try and push it one step further here. Bean gets the opening frag, Kale goes down. It's gonna be a five on four, but as you can see, the defense has already pushed in a full wrap. Three players on boss going to be going in for the full flank. They do spot one of them already on the rotation. They're gonna go back for the fight here, but they also need to be careful. Ally gonna be rotating late. 
through the spawn as well, but he's already taken down by ZZHY, so Q9, very comfortable here. They should be able to take this into overtime, but Lucas wants to try and shut things down, finds himself one, and he's looking for more here. Rita and Lucas, though, the last hope to close this one in regulation, and it's just not gonna happen. Q9 somehow find a way to bring us to a tie, and just like that, it's not over yet. A complete reset as we go into overtime. So overtime it is, and potentially the golden round following that. Given that it has been a little while since we've seen an overtime, for those who aren't familiar with the rule set here, we're going to play potentially six rounds, at least four. We play two three-round halves with the teams going back to the sides that they started on. And swapping after three, first team to four will win. If we go three apiece, then it's golden round time. A very tense situation for both of these teams now. Both teams had the lead and lost the lead at certain points during this match. Boss, we're in a slightly better position, but couldn't manage to hold it. Q9, bring it back. And it's fitting after a shorter day that we do have our final game going the full distance for potentially the final spot and definitely for the first confirmed elimination of the group stages here. The loser of this game is going home. Here we have it kicking off our overtime. It is going to be Q9 already sending two players outside to be into water. Meanwhile, though, we do see a little bit of a hesitation here coming out from Boss, but they do have a, a, just a slight control play here over towards Along. But we do see the very passive play from Boss once again, not wanting to commit anywhere just yet, just playing for that information and trying to toy with Q9 and force them to make a mistake. We do see them just playing that default, that 2-1-2 two, two setup. Shady going to be the only one really with vision on mid, but they need to be careful. Zemo going to sneak into that position right under the B bridge, just waiting for someone to potentially try and sneak out here. But he may just go for the peak himself. He's almost going to talk himself out of it on that one, though. The Q9 now back on that defensive side. Looking to shut down Boss here. Boss had a good half on their attack, but... So to the Q9. There's Kale, though, starting off the right way. Yazai down Zemo. He's going to hide here, bide his time, wait for the optional time, or optimal time, I should say, to strike. But Boss are actually getting out of the situation. They've got the pick. They're trying to fall back. ZZHY is looking for something in towards Catwalk. Not going to find anyone there just yet. Boss spread up around, uh, split up around the map. One player already out through long. Bit of emphasis being put on mid now. Trying to find another pick here, Boss, before they commit. But might not be presented to them. They might just have to go with what they have. Still an advantage though. Solo and Zemo both spotted there. Somehow both alive for now, but that's a lot of info given over to Boss. Still only Yaze, the player to fall here, but Boss, they've got to commit somewhere soon. Only 30 seconds on the clock here, but a very important first round in overtime for either team to grab. Shady takes down ZZHY and Bean. He's just going to fall off. He doesn't want to challenge that in a nice 1v3 for himself. He just wants to go for the isolated angle here, but it may not matter at this point. Lucas. Finds him pushing up A-Long. It's going to be a two on four now. Solo already down to half HP. Things looking better and better for Boss in this round. Zemo and Solo looking for some sort of hope in this one, but it's not going to happen. Rita takes down one. Zemo down to just a sliver of health. He's taken down by Shady. And Boss, they find the first round in overtime. Three more remaining for them to grab this win and send Q9 home. But... Still a chance for Q9 to get back into things here. It's into the first round. We do still have potentially five more, six if we need it to go to that golden round. But see if we need that. We've only had one golden round so far. That was Carbon versus. They play Mexico. I can't remember. It doesn't matter either way. The opening exchange does go heavily the way of Boss. They managed to come out of it in a four versus two, being heavily tagged up as well. An excellent opening for them. Now two v four here. And the match on Mexico was actually Boss against Carbon, mm -hmm. so Boss all too familiar with how Golden Rounds can go wrong, so they're not going to be wanting to take it to that one, as that is a heavy risk, especially now since they do have the early lead here, potentially 2-0 to zero in overtime. We could see maybe even a 4-0 closeout for them, but these extra rounds here definitely going to boost Boss's round score if they do win, or honestly, whoever wins, they're going to end with potentially 13 rounds here, maybe 14 if it goes to a Golden Round, so... Definitely going to give the winner of this match a high possibility of being that final team in the bracket stage. Kale finds one. It's being left in a 1v4 once again, but it's just not going to happen. Shady takes him down, and it's a 2-0 start to overtime for Boss. An excellent start for them as well. So they sorely have needed. Now looking to get that one more round to close it out. 
Lots of utility being thrown off the start of the round immediately from spawn for boss. And it looks like it will be a long take here. Three players heading out that way. Lots of short presence coming in for Q9 on the defensive side, but they definitely need this round. They don't want to go down three and zero. Boss's defensive side was good. It wasn't perfect, obviously, as it did end up in overtime, but it was good enough, surely, if they can get this third round to win them one round out of the three required to take this game in overtime without having to rely on that golden round. Yaze, I just put it out a couple of top mid there. But once again, it's back to this very heavy short presence for Q9. The solo player on B leaving long open. We'll see if the stack does pay off. But Q9, they are in desperation mode. They need this round very, very badly to keep themselves alive. And this one, a 3 0 half would make it almost impossible for them to close this one out. A golden round would be the only hope for Q9 if they fall here. So far, though, their global risk half has definitely been a struggle overall, to say the least. Failing to piece things together, but Boss, they've definitely stepped up to the plate in overtime, and now one round stands away from them and a perfect half here in this first one in OT. Boss, though, they're going to be potentially looking to fake here. They've got Ally alone over towards this B bomb site. The rest of the team could potentially funnel into Cat, though, and that's where things may get interesting because they could go right into the stack, and this is where it's going to be quite interesting indeed. Having some trouble. Yaze, though, preemptively falls off, so it's only going to be a three on three fight here on the back of Catwalk, but Q9, they still have to make it through this hold. We've seen Boss be very effective with how they challenge these aggressive angles. Kale and Shady gonna be leading the charge. Solo and ZZHY gonna try and hold it off. Solo gets the double kill. He's not done yet, gets the triple. It's gonna be a two on four. Q9 keeping the dream alive here as ZZHY takes down another. It's gonna be Lucas left in a 1v4. Looking for a glimpse of hope, but he finds the first. 1v3, Lucas, could he do the unthinkable here? He only has 20 seconds and the bomb is down. He has to move quickly. Lucas though, he's gonna find another. Gets the triple kill, but it's not not gonna happen, Bean saves the day. Lucas, almost an incredible story for him in that 1v4 clutch opportunity, but Q9, thankful that one didn't slip away there. Two to one on the first half in overtime. And this one may truly go the distance. Golden round, definitely an option on the table now as they secure that final round. It's just gonna be a one round separation here as we go into the second half of OT. That was an incredibly near thing there for Lucas. He nearly had the miraculous 1v4 to deny Q9 entirely of any rounds on their defending side, but they do manage to snatch the last one. Now they will jump over onto the blacklist and try and bring this one back. For Boss, they only need one round to at least secure that golden round, two to bring it home. And it needs to be a clean sweep here for Q9 if they want to take this without going to that golden round. So a very close game on our hands. Finally, we thought all the games today were going to be close. We've been wrong up until this point, but this final game of the group stage is certainly delivering as we will jump into the final half of overtime, one of at least three, potentially four, if we use that golden round. Rounds left in the best of one round robin group stages here. It's a lot of pressure coming in very early for the Global Risk players. Shady's already going to find the first one on the solos. ZZHY lurking here behind the box, but a lot of counter utility coming in as well. And that will force all these players, except for ZZHY out, who can now lurk. And they don't know he's still here. They haven't spammed this box yet. They normally do, so... Maybe some spam will find out. It's easy HY. We'll keep an eye on his health, see if that does suddenly start plummeting. But there's still two players posted up there, so difficult situation for him. Has to hit the perfect timing for when he decides to swing out. And his team are going to move over towards B, leaving him alone to try and sell potentially some sort of fake or at least just get some kills to make this take easier. It's going to be Q9 trying to force the issue here over towards B. But ZZHY, he's still in this A long position, and Lucas and Shady could both potentially run by him here if they can get this bomb planted on B. They have the bomb down though, sitting back almost towards their spawn B long. They definitely want to be careful of that positioning. They could get caught here though before they even have a chance to get in. It's going to be Rita and Kale both holding things off and stalling here for this push. They have the rotation come through as well, but Bean's already found one. ZZHY gives up his position though to go support his team because he knows they have a chance now to execute onto the B bomb site. And now 
It's going to be all about this rotation behind from Shady and Lucas. They're going to be pushing very quickly, but interesting decision from ZZHY. He's actually going to push up Catwalk and see if he can find a clearance on Ava Bean. He's already found another here on the B bomb site. Zemo gets the other, and that's a fully cleared bomb site. Lucas and Shady, though, both on the flank. They have to be careful, but Yaze, he's already found Shady. It's Lucas left in a 1v4, an all familiar situation for him to be in, but this time around, we'll see if he can make it happen. Last time he was close, but it's not going to be that close this time. Zemo takes him down, and just like that, it's a tie in overtime. Now, both teams need both of the remaining rounds in order to get the win here in overtime. If not, one apiece. We're going to that golden round, all to play for. Shady will manage to get across there. Lucas, need to support him as well, but Shady has gone down. Yazzie with a great shot. Lucas trying to fight through this smoke, but goes straight down to Bean. And Q9 getting very, very vocal indeed with every single kill they get. They know how much this means. They don't want to be that team that goes down one and four. They've certainly not lived up to expectations the rest of this tournament. The least they can do is deliver now when it finally, well, when it is their final chance to do so, I should say. Also, in the meantime, got some aggression going inside mid there. Full control of the catwalk, good information, but no spotting over towards A long. A solo player anchoring B. Very difficult round for them to come back into now. Five versus three. Boss, though, if they could somehow recover this one, it'd be a huge step towards that potential win. But Q9, this would be a big moment to to put themselves in the lead and potentially close this one in a 4-2 overtime. A very real situation for themselves. And they're on the blacklist side as well, the more favored side here. So two rounds in a row, not necessarily a task that they have out of reach for themselves here. But Boss, they're going to try and do everything in their power to shut things down here. Lucas, though, he's been one of the key players here in overtime, and he's already down and out as well as Shady. So the rest of these players on Boss definitely need to step up here. They want to make something big happen. The bomb, though, still hasn't committed just yet for Q9. But ZZHY, he's already found another. It's going to be a two on five. Kale catches one, but they get the trade immediately. Nice positioning there from Q9 to make that happen. And now it's already down to the 1v4. And it's just going to be traded out. And Q9, they find themselves in the lead. And now they have the potential to close this one out here and now in overtime. No golden round risk if they can make it happen now. It all comes down to this final round now, boss. They had the early lead in the game, in the regulation, in overtime as well. Now though, it's all let slip. It all comes down to this. They need to find these opening kills. They push around a long and they will grab the first there. Shady grabs Uzi HY, so maybe it's not all over just yet. But even if they do get this win here, boss, there's only two rounds at most left in this game. One here in overtime. And then that golden round, which boss are all too familiar with at this point. Trying to fight back into it here. It was against Carbon on Mexico yesterday. They want to get it against Q9, but Bean's going to grab Shady, trading it back into that four versus four. Q9 have been looking very dangerous in the late stages of this game. Q9 now with a chance to close it. And even 4v4, Bean only taking a little bit of damage there in that fight as well. But they have to decide where they want to take this in. They may have made the right move. They're actually going to be working their way towards the A bomb site. There's nobody directly on it. Two players posted up long A, but Q9 playing very reserved here. They don't want to make the wrong move. They don't want to risk potentially giving away this map. We do see Yaze, though, starting to scout out towards B, but these positions could be given up quickly. If someone on the defense goes out for a wide peek, Solo, though, he wants to know if these players are over here towards A long. He's going to try and do some hunting by himself. Maybe just keep them there. He, if he knows two players are here, he could just keep them here while the three players on B take a three on two. It's a smart decision for him to just stall this rotation off while the rest of his team goes for this engage. A great play coming in from Q9, but they still have to get this A or this B execution to run effectively. Boss still with a chance here, but Q9 just going to be running down the clock. Here it comes, though. They're going to be going for the full execution right now. There's going to be some trouble here on the B bomb site. They have to hold this one off. Kale and Ally taking some damage here. Ally already very low. They just spam out his double stack position there. It is going to be the execution coming through here. It comes from Q9. They're going to be able to only get one in the process so far. Actually, Ally barely surviving there. Finally goes down to Zemo. It's a 2v3, but still a very winnable one here. The retake coming through. Rita and Lucas both closing in here. A lot of time left. That bomb does go down, and Yaze's going to swing out as well. It's all down to Ritter. One versus three. Desperately trying to keep his team in this tournament, in this game. 
If he cannot pull off the one versus three here, he's going to be sent home with the rest of his lineup. Q9 looking to do it, and they've done it as well. They come back into it. Finally, they claim their second win. It's in overtime, but they get it done. That's going to be the end of the group stage, and Boss will be going home one and four. Such an unfortunate way to fall. Two games that Boss loses in overtime here in the group stage, and unfortunately, just too many close calls for them that didn't pan out. They will be going out of the event here in last place. A great effort, though, by everyone in the group stage. We saw so many close games. I mean, even Boss with a 1-4 score doesn't really do them justice for how well they played. They had two games falling in overtime. Another one, 10-8. Only one game where they really weren't able to keep up with the other on a loss. So, overall, great performance from the guys on Boss. But, unfortunately, this is the end of the road for them. But congratulations to Q9. They will walk away with at least one win here in their two matches on the day. And we'll have to wait and see if they've done what it takes to push even further and somehow stay alive in this tournament. Yeah, it's going to be a very difficult one indeed, but uh, we do still have now two teams on that two wins, three losses margin. So we'll have to see, hopefully soon, which one of those does actually manage to get through. But at the conclusion of group play, we do have one team on four wins. It's Pacific coming over the top of all gamers. Speaking of, they tie with Carbon. They managed to reverse sweep their way up to three and two. And Black Dragons and, uh, not Boss, sorry, Q9 currently sharing two wins and three losses with Boss. The only team not managing to reach more than one win. Honestly, a crazy way for things to end out, but it looks like if this is the final rankings accurate as they are, it's going to be the top four there, Pacific, AG, Carbon, and Q9 making it out of the group stage. So that would mean we see AG versus Carbon and Pacific versus Q9. So there's still a potential for a CFPL rematch in the finals if this is true here. So Pacific and Q9 and then AG and Carbon should indeed be your semi-finals there. So somehow, some way, Q9, they just barely find their way back into it. And honestly, the overtime rounds probably contributed to them getting to this point and they're just able to barely slide into that position, but still they have their work cut out for them. They're gonna have to play Pacific, who we've seen play phenomenal throughout the event so far. Oh yeah, Pacific have been very, very strong indeed. So. That's been ridiculously good. It be, uh, should be some good matches once we get into those semifinals tomorrow in the best of threes. Definitely, it is going to be an insane day tomorrow. The semifinals, going to see who comes out on top and works their way into that all-important live grand finals in Shanghai. Four teams left, and we'll see who comes out on top tomorrow, guys. Thanks for tuning in.